Talk us through your earliest memories of the sport. Winning the World Cup, I think that's that's where it started, you know, 92 World Cup. You know, before that, I was playing street cricket with my mates and table ball cricket. So, but 92 World Cup, when Pakistan won the World Cup, and that inspired me to play for my yeah. country. And your I- test debut in 1997 against South Africa, century and a half century on debut. I, I think f- five days, best five days of my life. Playing in the India-Pakistan game, talk us through it. Nerves, emotion. You always feel that, you know, like it, 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 it was like uh, you can lose to anyone, but you can't lose to um, India. And the same thing goes to them as well. So, given the start that you had to your test career, how would you sum up your test career? I'm, I'm a big believer anything happened, you know, God knows best. But, you know, like I, I've been hard done by and uh, I didn't achieve what I can what potential I have and I, I had a really great time at Surrey. We we had an amazing side, you know, and uh, led by really well from Adam Holyoke, you know. He was, I think, one of the best captains I played at that But I'm, bowling Yorker for me is really important, you know, like where you release the ball. So you need to release the ball, like when, when I say, you know, like hand up and you're watching the base, you know. I played with three different guys. They were all different, you know, like Steve Akram, Bakar Yunus, and Shwe Bakhtar, myself. They were all different, you know. Steve Akram used to watch on the top of the stump, you know, bales. Bakar was middle, and Shwe was uh, really uh, on the shoe side. I was like that. The first time Pakistan beat uh, India on ICC events. And I said to them, you know, like, we, we said to them, you know, like, guys, you just need to go and try. Don't worry about the end. What are your main philosophies as a coach? Trust. Cricket Love Stories with Mini Okagram. Today we're joined by Azar Mahmood. Azar, how things? Yeah, things going really well. Uh, you know, like COVID pandemic and, you know, sitting in the hotel in Crawley, having my quarantine, 10 days quarantine. Today is my third day. Oh, God, it's a, it's a long one for you still. Um, but let, let's take it all the way back with yourself about your career. You're born in Rao Pindi. Talk us through your earliest memories of the sport? Uh, born in Rawal Pindi, but I live in uh, in Islamabad. So, yeah, my earliest memories, you know, just playing table ball cricket in, on the street with my mates. And that was that was it, you know, like, and the 92 World Cup, uh, when I started playing hardball cricket, first time I went out to Multan to play the Pakistan Cup. So, first time I went away from my own city to play hardball cricket. And winning the World Cup, I think that's that's where it started, you know, 92 World Cup. You know, before that, I was playing street cricket with my mates and table ball cricket. So, but 92 World Cup, when Pakistan won the World Cup, and that inspired me to play for my country. And I thought, okay, I need to play for my country. And people were saying, you know, I'm good enough. But I worked really hard after the 92 World Cup. And I was in the Pakistan side for 96 yeah, talk about that period. Obviously, you're saying you saw the country win the World Cup. Did you then like join a club side? How did it work back then, back home? Yes, there was a club cricket. We were very strong club cricket in Islamabad because Majid Khan was the president of Islamabad. So we were playing uh, club cricket. Uh, we used to play two days game. You know, like it's a 75 hour game. You, one day you play and the Next day, the game started around 2 o'clock till um, sunset. So, 75 overs each side. So, we were playing good quality cricket. But I was playing for the club, you know, like we want to register our club, a local club. But I never get registered. Then I went to a register club. And uh, I started playing uh, for that club. And the same year, because I was at 18 at night now. So, I got selected uh, under 19. And same year, I was selected for first class team as well. So, which was really good for me. You know, I had a massive uh, season in uh, under 19 last year and then the first class. And then at that time, particularly at that time, you know, we used to have the players from coming from different cities. Though Mushtaq Ahmed was uh, 
one of them, uh, Ramiz Raja, Akib Javed. And these guys were our pros. And they used to come and play for Islamabad. And uh, I learned a lot from these guys. And that's where everything started. Were you always an all-rounder as a youngster? Did you favour one part of the game more than the other? Talk, talk us through your early stages of your cricketing development and where your suit was strongest. I think my strongest suit was my batting when I started playing cricket, you know, at school. Uh, I was an opening batsman, played for my clubs, you know, as an opening batsman in early stages. And then I developed, you know, like I used to go off spin. And uh, I'm very lucky. And uh, I thank this gentleman called Maaz Khan. He was the guy who hit me 28 runs and then I stopped bowling off spin. <laughs> <laughs> so and then you know I used to I used to carry all the balls net balls so we used to put uh, on the ball you know like we don't have enough money to buy a new ball every time so we used to put this uh, electric trip on on the seam so I used to have one ball really small one tiny ball one side is shiny one is reverse so it was because I was bowling with the tape ball uh, seam up deliveries but uh, with that ball, you know, I was I was trying to get in shape in, in swinger. And then I developed my stuff, you know, like learning from the senior guys, asking them questions. And that's how I developed my bowling. That's why, you know, like I've been through a lot to learn my bowling. So that's why I'm, I think I'm a little bit successful in terms of when it comes to coaching. So I, I've been through all those things, you know, rather than, you know, nice to guy turning in and bowling and don't know what is happening with the ball. So I learned each and everything by growing up, learning the art, how to swing the ball, how to seam it. And that's how I, it started. You know, batting was my strongest suit. But eventually when I got selected in under 19 and, you know, like all-rounders and people are start talking about me as a bowling all-rounder. So I was batting at number seven, number eight. So, and then I worked hard on my bowling than batting. Yeah, you mentioned how you are senior guys and in terms of you developing your swing and seam bowling. Any tips you can give youngsters perhaps watching this about the art of swing and seam bowling? Is it grip position, wrist, front arm, anything else? Talk us through it. Yeah, I, th I think it's really important because bowling is not easy when you bowl and your body, you know, is physically is very demanding. But every guy I spoke to and, you know, I teach them, I said, you know, you come in for the purpose, you know, what you want to achieve in this session, for example, half an hour bowling, five to six hours. So just put the marker there. So put the mark in there. Okay, I'm going to hit this mark, you know, first I need to get my length right. And then they start swinging the ball, you know, like uh, you need to pitch the ball up to swing it, to allow the ball to swing it. So it's, 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 it's your wrist position is really important, how you hold the ball. And, uh, you know, like, like you can swing it. Swing is in, in the hand. You know, people talk about, you know, condition and everything. Swing is in the hand. But you can get a bit more swing when the conditions help you, you know, like a, for a longer period of time. But swing, you can swing the ball from your hand. You know, it's, it doesn't need where you, if you got a new ball in your hand, you can swing it. Reverse ball is totally different. You have to have a one-sided ball is shiny one side and rough the other side. That's a different part, part of the game as well. So you can learn from there. And then, yeah, you made your first class day before Islamabad. Is it the 93-94 season? But then you made your ODI day before Pakistan against India in 96. Was it in Toronto? So that period of making your first class debut to then gain international recognition, such a short period of time, who recognised your talents at the national side? Yeah, because... What was that period in your life? You know, like, uh, it was it was really short period, you know. I had my first class career in 93 and then played for Pakistan in 96. But, you know, like, four years prior to that, when we were having the, our own club to register... So we used to play a lot of cricket, you know. I used to play three games to four games a week with the uh, KRL Khan Research Laboratory in Pakistan. So they used to we used to play a lot of games against them. So we were match fit. We, we were match sharp. We got a match sharpness, you know, street smartness come from there. So because coming to uh, under-19 and playing under-19 and suddenly you think, oh, I got my debut here and then suddenly 
girls. But before that, you know, playing under 19 at that time and first class cricket, I knew the art of bowling. I can, at that time, you know, I can swing the ball both ways with pace and then reverse swing as well with with my variation, you know, at that time I used to bowl cutter and back, uh, like a leg cutter. So I used, I knew each and everything before I coming to. When I played uh, with these guys when they were coming uh, as an overseas player, Mushtaq Ahmed, I remember he was captain. So I bowled a new ball and he said to me, I was bowling well, and he said, hold on, can you bowl the reverse swing? I said, yes. And then he came to bowl himself. And then the ball, when the ball was slightly older, he got me in, brought me back to bowl that over um, that spell, you know, it was evening, and it was against Rahul Pindi. Uh, it's a local rival between Islamabad and Rahul Pindi. So I took five for him, five overs or something like that. So that's where you know people see me and they said, "Oh, this guy got some potential and talent." And then uh, when I was batting, you know, down the down the order, you know, you need a quick runs. So I went there and I smashed few balls, few sixes and fours there, and then. That's how people recognize me, you know, like, oh, he's a young guy, but potentially he's a good fielder, he can field, he can bowl, he can bat. So that's where, you know, the word of mouth being told, Mushi told Ramiz, and then, you know, that's how things start moving. Do you think pace can be taught or is it inherent? So a lot of people talk about, when you talk about the technical side of the game, braced front leg, shoulder hip separation what are your views on it you know that's very important aspect of the bowling you know like uh, first of all your run up uh, your run up is nice and smooth you know then then you gather you know back foot landing front foot landing you know follow through all these things you know will allow you to bowl better consistent and injury free you know if someone you know like in our part of the world you know like a lot of people you say come up with a different different um, abilities with the ball, but, you know, they have a different uh, issues about their alignment and all these things. So these, these guys get injured. You know, Malinga is totally different. Swelt and Veer, wrong-footed guy. So you can see a lot of people, you know, unorthodox people coming in subcontinent rather than, you know, uh, Australia, South Africa, because in, in these countries here, you know, we these guys, young guys being groomed from the early ages, so and they're technical. They are technical, more solid than the guy coming from Asia. He might have a more pace and more skill than the guy who's here. So yeah, that's allow you to play, and that's why you see in county cricket, you hardly see anyone bowling at ninety miles. You see a lot of people bowling medium pace. So you need to see what type of bowling action, how you generate pace. For example, you know, like in Pakistan, we play a lot of tape ball cricket. So all the bowlers we have, they got really quick arms. So they generate pace from the from their arm. And then if you see Vasim Akram, short run up, running in, and then the shoulder. And then some people like Bradley and Shrebok, that they generate pace from their run up. Vakar Yunus, you know, they need a run up to uh, generate their pace. It's all about momentum, how you get momentum and ball uh, deliver to the ball to the crease. That's really important. And then your test debut in 1997 against South Africa. Talk us through it. A century and a half century on debut. Special, oh, special yeah. day. Special match. Oh, I think five days, best five days of my life. Um, to be honest, you know, like as you mentioned, you know, having a debut in 96 and then uh, test debut in 97. That 96, you know, like I played, I think, seven, eight games for Pakistan. I was on one tour, I was in the team and then dropped. So never, no one see my batting skill. But one of, uh, in 97, I went again to Toronto. I played, uh, I, I think I got 33 against India. And Sayyid Anwar at, was captain at that time, you know, like he said, you know, like, uh, yeah, this guy can bat. And uh, against India, uh, sorry, against South Africa, we're having a home series. So why don't we play him as an all-rounder? So because we heavily rely on that, which is, you know, like Mushtaq, Saklan, and uh, these guys are playing in there. So I thought, okay, that's where I get opportunity. And uh, it was the best opportunity, you know, I was batting at uh, number eight and I had a great partnership first with Vakar and then uh, Mushtaq, highest 
10th wicket partnership at that time. 151. And then we were down, I think, five five down when I went to bat again to save the test match and I got 50 not out as well. So, yeah, you know, like I, as I said, you know, the batting was my best suit when I was start playing. But uh, at that test match, you know, like I was I was top one more again. And that that helped me because uh, I toured uh, the Pakistan A team when I was dropped from after 96. So we had a tour in 97 to England. Uh, and we played, I think, eight games, county games, you know, I, I bowled really well, I batted really well. So that gave me a lot of boost and confidence of my ability to enhance on international level. So the, within that same year, you played against South Africa again. And you got another century, the 136. I think Wisdom ranked it as one of the top 10 best innings of all time. Talk us through that, knock. As well, because when I got hundred, you know, and a lot of South African guys, they said you come to South Africa on a bouncy pitches, we'll see you, and you know we're gonna kill you, and uh, we'll we'll see how how good you are, and you know, like I was in Pakistan, and so okay, I spoke to uh, Ijaz Ahmed because he was a good cutter and puller. You know, he said to me, if you wanna go and get runs in South Africa, so because of the bouncy pitches, you need to have good cut pull. And on the up hitting zone. So I used to practice a lot, you know, like with my Islamabad guys, you know, having a new ball and, and the plastic ball. You know, I, I used to practice a lot. When I went to South Africa, I got 300 in three innings in South Africa, two in test matches and one in uh, one in first class game. So I, it, it was first game, you know, we were down, down and up about, I think we were five down when I got 100 in Centurion. And then the 100 you're talking about, that was in... Uh, uh, Durban, Kings Meet. And uh, because I was batting with Schwab and we were 84, 74, 5. And I just went and did counter attack to all the bowlers, you know, like uh, Schwab was there. We, me and Schwab had partnership of 80 runs and Schwab only managed to get uh, six runs. And the first run he got when, the, when I think we had a partnership of was something like 50. So he got edge going to third man. On that inning, that's why um, Wisdom rated that inning because of the strike I I kept with me. And, you know, every time they bring the baller in and then I hit over the top and on the last ball, they both tried to board me a bumper. And we said to Shweb, you know, you have to run. So, you know, like every time ball going to the keeper and Shweb was running in. So I kept my strike, you know. First ball, first couple of ball of the other, you know, looking for a boundary and then last two balls, you know, get single. But credit goes to Shweb. You know, he, he just hang it there with me. And we had a great partnership. I think one of the best test matches I witnessed and I played because Pakistan, that test match, you know, Pakistan won the test match first time in South Africa. It was great, great test match. You know, like I got 100 in first inning. Uh, Said Anwar got 100 in second inning. Shiv got five for in second inning. And Mushtaq got 10 for in that, that test match. And it was it was tough match, and I remember that ball. You know, people always remember the Seema Akram delivery in '92 World Cup. But I remember that delivery against uh, Boucher. Makar got a second new ball, and he was away swinging, and he, got, he pitched the ball up and got his off stump. So that was a remarkable test match. Yeah, you talked about counter attacking. You talked about in your training practicing against um, pace. Back then. T20 cricket wasn't around. Like you talk, you listen to players, coaches now, they say that players do a lot of range hitting. Back then, what what were you doing in practice to to enable you to have a 360 game as you demonstrated in South Africa, especially in that knock? Uh, I, I wish I have 360 game at that time, but I never had 360 game. But, you know, I have, uh, I have had a, Good understanding, you know. I, I was because when I I was young, never had a money to buy a helmet. To be honest, and we used to, I rem remember I told you about putting the tape on there. So when and we used to practice on the cement pitch. So when the ball coming up here, so you know how to how to play that ball. You know, you leave it or you cut or pull. So because if you see my early early on, I never wear a helmet. You know, like in my debut as well. You know, like on the slow pitch, I never wear a helmet because I was. I wasn't comfortable. But because watching the ball is really important, 
in these days, if you see way back, people were leaving the ball like this. And now, if the short ball is coming, people, like they're not watching the ball. And that's why people got hit now more often than not. And when you're watching the ball, you can see it and you can leave it or you can watch it and pull it. So practice, you know, as I said, like bowling, practice with a purpose, you know, like I'm hitting the ball, I'm going to hit it over point. There's a backward point and point is there, so I'm going to hit that gap. So I used, when I used to practice, I used to practice it field in my mind. So this is a fielder. So I need to hit this gap. And I used to put something on, you know, like mark there when I'm practicing, cut short. So a, a ball needs to go in there. So I need to play late or I need to pick the ball up to play in front of square. So, you know, like I was, I was young guy, but I picked these things from my club mates or the people who are doing it because I always pick something and I try go and try in the nets, you know, whether it's with the ball or bat, I try it. I, I'm still learning new things, you know, like now I'm coach, but I'm still ball in my hand and I'm doing something with the ball and see how can I get a bit more out of this cricket ball or bat, you know, what can I do? So cricket is an amazing game, you know, you always learn. And then in uh, 1998, there was that famous India v Pakistan game. India chased down that 315. Well, back then, it was a massive total. Obviously, now you're seeing teams score 400. But back then, that was a massive chase. Talk us through that game, that one of the famous games in one-day cricket. Yeah, I think Dada got 100. And, you know, India-Pakistan game is uh, never a dull moment. And uh, and you know the quality of Sachin Tendulkar and the team they have. And on that particular day, you know, like we were, we, we didn't bowl well up front. We were under pressure and we make silly uh, decision on that day. And that's why, you know, back then it was a massive chase. And I think uh, Ganguly got 100 in that game. They played really well. They didn't play well, to be honest. And if I'm a, like I say, a pressure perspective, how, you know, as a player yourself, playing in an India-Pakistan game, talk us through it. Nerves, emotion. Did you, as a player, feel that external pressure? Yeah, you always feel that, you know, like it, it, it was like uh, you can lose to anyone, but you can't lose to um, India. And same thing goes to them as well. So, yeah, because I always believe, you know, like whenever whenever I'm, I'm playing against India, okay, this is a time, you know, I have to perform. And if you perform in one game, you become a hero overnight. And if you see my record, you know, my record against India is always better because that give me, I felt something from inside, you know, I get more motivated, I get more, you know, suddenly I felt I got more energy in my body. And every time I go there and I said, okay, this is my day, I, I'm, I need to perform here. And uh, that's always helped. But, you know, like when it's come to tension, nerves, you know, how you handle the pressure, what if you have a bad day, what's going to media going to say, what people will react to that and all these things, you know, if you're in the mind, if you if that's in your mind, then you're in, in big trouble. But you need to block all the, all the noise from outside and just focus on your game. Yeah, talk us through uh, your most memorable matches playing the India-Pakistan rivalry. For you personally, standout match? Uh, I think it was 1997, uh, Pepsi Cup. Um, because Pakistan lost to India in the semi-final and Bangalore, that was Bangalore and it was semi-final when Jadeja hit Bukhar for 20 runs or something like that in that over. So I, when I went to the, at Bangalore ground, this is the first time, you know, Pakistan was playing after that and it was final. And I thought, okay, you know, we have to win this. We can't lose this one as well. So because the memory went through my mind, I was watching on TV that game. My memory went through my mind, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I need to do some special thing. And in the end, you know, like I was having my first five for against India in that particular game. And I got uh, runs with the bat as well. By the way, I, <laughs> me and Enzi was batting and Enzi was a 90 and he got run out. <laughs> I was, I was, <laughs> he wasn't happy, but he was happy when I got five for and I got a man of the match in that game. And then talk us through the 1999 World Cup journey, 
getting to the final at Laws just didn't get over the line. But talk us through that tournament and the journey, that team coming together over the years and peaking in the tournament. You know, we've, we've been playing really well, really good cricket. I, that was the t- tournament I was talking about, you know, like it, it was 98, I think. That was, we went to India. It was tough. Vasibai was captain at that time. So when he come back. So we've been playing really good cricket. We beat India in India, Sri Lanka, all the um, Sharjah Cup, everything. So we were beating every side. Uh, when we come to in, uh, England, you know, like uh, if you see a bench stand in that tournament, you know, like Mushtaq Ahmed was sitting on the bench, Bakar Junas, Slim Malik was on the bench, and then sometime Lala or sometime Bajatul Lavasti on the bench. So we got a really good side. We were playing good cricket, you know, we had few hiccups, you know, lost to Bangladesh during that tournament, India, but, you know, we've, we were the first one to qualify. Uh, I think it was a great atmosphere, a great, you know, team bounding things we did with uh, Richard Piatas at that time. The team was chilling together, but unfortunately, unfortunately, we didn't cross the line on the final day because we were the first one to qualify. And then what happened, you know, like we went back to London and there was three days of proper rain, you know, like we haven't had an outdoor session in that three days. So, and the other hand, Australia was, they, they were out and about, you know, like they were, if they lose from the last four game anytime, they were out of the tournament. So they were, they've been playing really good cricket. And on, on that day, you know, like uh, they were the better side. They got us, I think, bowled out. We were bowled out for 130 or and then, if we fast forward a couple of years, your last test match ended up being in 2001. Given the start that you had to your test career, how would you sum up your test career? Did you think you got given enough of an opportunity? In your uh, uh, how, would you, how, would you, how did you see things? How do you see things? Because I, I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer. Anything happened, you know, God knows best. But, you know, like I, I've been hard done by and uh, I didn't achieve what I can, uh, what potential I have, you know, like it was, 20, I was 24 years old at that time, you know, and I'm up in test career finished before even I played county cricket, you know, when you understand, because you, the, my game was attacking because I, that's the way I played. But, you know, in test match cricket, you know, we need to have a basics and everything. When I learned the game, I didn't play test match cricket, to be honest, you know, like playing county cricket, learn here how to play swing balls and how to develop your innings in a certain manner, you know, like I, I, I was, I knew one way to attack the bowling, but international cricket, you know, playing test match cricket and against quality bowlers, they won't allow you to do that. Yes, when you're, when you're having good time, you can have it. But unfortunately, I think this is to do with the politics as well. And, uh, and um, you know, like one of the chairmen said in 2000, you know, I'm the next captain of Pakistan. And that's where everything started going against me. Yes, one thing, A, uh, whenever I got opportunity, I'd, you know, like my best bowling figure was 4 for 50 at the Lord's test match, you know. And the next test match, I bowled only 8 over and I was drop from the team, you know, and never got and never got chance to get back into the test side, you know, like in my ODI career, yes, I was out in the team, out from the team and then coming back, but in test match cricket, I never got opportunity to come back again, and with my record, you know, like got 320 or uh, test matches, and with the ball, you know, every time I had a ball, you know, I had an impact, get a breakthrough, but that's life, that's gone, that's history. Yeah, you talked about county cricket, how it actually came about the move to Surrey in 2002. Who made that connection? What were your reasons for coming over, etc.? Saki Saki was the overseas player and uh, Adam Holyoke spoke to Saki and he said, you know, like he was in the test squad. So he said, you know, if you're not coming, then we want as a to replace you in that six-week period. So he came to me and he said, I said, Seki, I want to get back into the side. you asking me to go and play county cricket. So, and then, you know, I spoke to a couple of guys, a couple of friends, you know, and they said, you know, you're not going to get into the test side, so why don't you go and play? 
and that's where it started. And um, I came here and I performed really well in my first season. You know, like uh, one of the game, I think my best bowling figure in uh, county, eight for sixty against um, Lancashire, and I performed really well with the bat and the ball. So next year there was two overseas, me and Saki didn't sign, and I was out of the Pakistan team. Not playing there, so that's got me an opportunity to play for Surrey, and I I had a really great time at Surrey from 2002 till seven. Yeah, was it? You won the championship in 2002. You had T20 success in 2003, and you won the Pro 40. So, what clicked for you as a side during that period? Oh, we, we had an amazing side, you know, and uh, led by really well from Adam Holyoke, you know. He was, I think, one of the best captain I played and that. I remember, you know, like, uh, as a Pakistani coming from Pakistan, you always play the situation, you know, like, I remember we were playing against Essex uh, and we were four down, you know. Uh, Topi got out and uh, Mark Butcher, all these, all these senior guys got out. And I went to bat. Adam Holly was batting at that time. So the guy bowled me a couple of deliveries, you know, like full ones. I just blocked two of them. And during the, after the, me and Smokey were standing together and he said, why didn't you hit that ball? I said, because we were four down. He said, no, no, no. Don't play the situation. Play the ball, you know. And he said, you know, we sign you because the way you bat, so don't. And in the end, you know, like I never looked back. And then give me authority and, you know, go and play your game and express yourself. And then I, I did every single time I went in. In that game, I, I ended up getting 80 odd. So, and we won the game. And after that, you know, like he always asked me, you know, what you need to do and who's going to get this person's ticket. I said, I'm going to get it. So me and Adam had a um, really good relationship. Because he was all rounder, he understand my game, and I understand his game. So he was a great leader. He was a great leader. I think that was a set of success was in two thousand two, three, and four even. Describe the differences playing in the UK, swing and seam in ball whilst batting. Obviously, with the Duke ball as well in hand. Also, from a fixture perspective, a lot said about the volume of games. With you being an all rounder, how did you cope from a physical? aspect point of view as well you doing anything different in the gym or was it just something that you got you just rolled with uh you never got a time to go to the gym to be honest pulling 25 overs and on early days you know i wasn't a gym person like i used to train i used to bowl a lot and that was that was it you know like hardly go to the gym but after that you know i realized you know i need to do that uh, having said that, uh, because you asked the question, you know, like how it, it was hundred days of cricket, uh, so it was whenever I go home, you know, I was so tired, and next day you have to do the same thing again, over and over again. So it was really tiring and fatigue when I played for Surrey. To be honest, never got a day off unless you injured. So it's tough because playing, as as you mentioned, do ball swinging, and because in Pakistan hardly any swing, so we used to anything coming on our leg, you know, like here. People can take a ball away from you, pitching on a leg stump and ball is going away and you're trying to hit there on a mid-wicket area. That's a natural shot for wristy player coming from subcontinent Asia. So, and I find it really tough, you know, like, especially in four-day cricket, when you try to hit on the onside and leading edge goes to the slip and uh, or uh, extra cover or something like that. So then I start, uh, then I start realize, you know, okay, here, you need to play straight, play towards mid-week, mid-on rather than mid-wicket. So that's how I practice a lot. And then I understand, you know, how to play here in this condition, play the ball late, don't go to the ball. Like in subcontinent, you go to the ball here, you need to let the ball come to you. And you learn from your experiences. And, and that's how I, I learned. And that's why I'm, I'm regretted, you know, like I never got a chance to play test match cricket again. Because when I understand my game, when I understand how to make runs, and I didn't play test match cricket. Then internationally on the one day scene, you're still involved with Pakistan. 2003 World Cup, the side didn't make it out, the group. Talk us through the end of that four year period, 2003 to seven, in and out of the side, recalled for the World Cup in 07, but weren't given the opportunity perhaps you deserve. Uh, Talk us through it. 
yeah, it's like like I said, you know, like uh, I was playing, you know, Test match cricket, last Test match in two thousand and one, and then I think one day cricket as well. You know, from that point of view, point, you know, it was coming into the side, playing one game, and then going out from the side. You know, not selected again and stuff. It's been going on, and then I, at that time, you know, like I was, I was really confused. Uh, you know, I start doubting on my ability and skill because I was playing it for Surrey, you know, doing so well. But whenever I got opportunity to play for Pakistan, I got one game or sometime, you know, without the game. You know, like in 2003 World Cup, as you mentioned, you know, like I didn't play any single game. I, I played the last game against Zimbabwe and it was strained out. I didn't bowl, I didn't bat. And then I was dropped from the team. So, you know... That's where, you know, you think, oh, my God, where I'm going now. So, okay, I need to concentrate on the county cricket or international cricket. That's That was a tough, tough time, you know, like for me. Not because I can't perform, but it, it was, you know, no surety. In, in 2007 World Cup, as you said, I've been told before the toss I was playing. Before that, I, I said to them, I said, you need an act extra seamer here because the pitch was green and uh, they said, no, we're going to play with Danish. I said, don't play me, but play the seamer. You know? And same thing happened, you know, like when Inzi was coming, I was, I used to have a mid, in, at that time, we don't have enough coaches. So I, I was, I was uh, catching the ball from the bowler and Inzi called me and he said, you're playing. And it was 38 degrees. I went running to eat something if, it, if we bowl now. So that's how I got opportunity. But I played that one game and then I was out again. So it was, it was, you know, playing one game and again, Champions Trophy, 2004 Champions Trophy. After the World Cup, Bob Woodmore came in and he said, I want you to be in my side. I said, okay. He called me in uh, Champions Trophy. I didn't play any single game and then I was dropped again. So, you know, no one can perform in that when you have a, that mindset. You know, you never know you're going to get into the side first and then you get into the 11. Second thing. And then, okay, now you've got a one opportunity to go and perform. If you can't, then you're out. And then the move to Kent, how did that come about then? Post the 07 World Cup, was it 2008 you joined Kent? How was that as a yes. moment, experience, moment in your career as well? Uh, yeah, it was a great, uh, I think it was great. Uh, I need a change at that time. And it was the right change for me. I, I personally feel like that. Because in 2007 World Cup, Pakistan Cricket Board said, you know, like, we're done with you. And I said, okay. And Sarah released me in that season as well because uh, we need a spinner. And we didn't sign a spinner. I mean, signed someone else for two years still there. So then I was playing a county game. I met uh, Kesey. And he said to me, he said, uh, how to reverse the ball? I, said, I, I just laughed. I, I said, you know, why don't you sign me? And he said, why are you not playing uh, for Surrey? I said, they released me. And I, I just said that. And we exchanged a number. And that, that was it. And then I called him and said, what's going on? And he said, you know, what is your status? And I said, you know, uh, I'll be a local. He said, if you're local, then we can sign you. Come and meet me. I went to see him. And I asked Surrey at that time. I said, I'm going to sign this thing. I'm local. You need me? And they said, no. And I think that was the best move for me going to Kent at that time. And Graham Ford was the coach there. And uh, at that time, you know, we play, used to play four tournaments. On that season, like you asked me how you recover from, you know, any fixtures are so heavy. I went to Kent and I played only five first class game in that season. And I, I got 100 on the first, first game as well at, for Kent. So... He said to me, you are a major part of our one-day competitions. So I'm going to give you rest. I said, okay. And I played only five games. So my body was, I was fit. I was strong. You know, I was feeling fresh. And I was enjoying my cricket. And then I went to, next year, I went to them. I said, you know, like, thank you very much for this. But now, why don't we sign a one-day deal and play four-day cricket as pay-as-you-go player? Because I don't want to take money. Um, I, I'm on a full contract, but I'm playing only five games or six games. Doesn't I'm not comfortable with that. Why don't you do that? And then, you know, sit down with them. And I said, okay, I will play eight games, depending on, you know, your requirement, my fitness. And, 
and I played that every season, you know, like rather than having 100, 100 days of cricket, you know, like 40 days off uh, or 36 days off of playing cricket, you know, like that give me, uh, that's enough my career actually, just give me to prolong my career a bit more. Yeah, that first season with Kent, you reached a couple of finals, the T20 and the and the Lords final as well, didn't quite get over the line. But again, a side that was successful in the sense of getting to those big big stages on the um, getting through the tournaments and then reaching the big final. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we used to have a brilliant side at Kent at that time. You know, a lot of South African Justin Kent uh, and all these guys. You know, um, that were playing for at for the Kent and we, we had a decent side and we beat every every single team unfortunately you know uh, not crossing the hurdle uh, but not winning it but you know like we are proud what we achieved for Kent you know like it was it was great and then 2013 to 16 back to Surrey as well you're also playing a lot of franchise cricket around the world so for Dhaka Kings 11 Punjab Sydney Cape Cobras Barbados, Kolkata Knight Riders, Islamabad United. Talk us through franchise cricket from a player's perspective. A lot of people yeah. got their opinions. The hundreds, you know, at the time of this recording, the hundred is literally around the corner in the UK. Certain members and counties have their views. But as a player, and now a coach as well, do you think it enhances the, the development of the game as a whole? Uh, Absolutely, absolutely. You see the modern day of cricket, you know, like T20 and T10 and all these things. It's allow bowlers to enhance their skill, get different type of variety under their belt. And same goes to batsmen, you know, like see the butler, the play. The, have you ever thought playing reverse sweep of a fast bowler bowling at 90 miles an hour? You never imagined that. But because of the modernization of this game, and people start to do that because uh, in our time, you know, when you miss even miss a Yorker, you find Yorker was the best ball. I still believe Yorker is the best ball, but your best ball goes for a six. If some guy, you know, down on the knee, put a bat in and goes for six. So, you know, the game has changed. And uh, definitely, you know, it's uh, give a lot of uh, people uh, a new career. And... Uh, lot of uh, understanding about the game, understanding about the, you know, skills level. You see a lot of people bowling knuckleball, back of the hand, batters, a dipper, and all these sort of things. You know, batsmen have more shots, and we having we we seeing more result in Test match cricket as well uh, because of that. And I I think it's a great great thing. As you ask me, you know, like franchise cricket. I played one season, you know, I said, I'm not going to play any any cricket in that, that season. So I struggled, basically not playing cricket for six months. And then I was training, but not cricket in fit. And that when I went to New Zealand, you know, in 2012, I think that was the time. So I thought, okay, let me go and play T20 cricket. I had a great successful for Auckland Aces, you know, we won that tournament there and then qualify for the Champions League. Then Dhaka Premier League, you know, like, Went there, Dhaka Premier League, won, won it there as well, Dhaka. And then from there, you know, like IPL, got selected in IPL as a British national. So, I mean, playing Kings 11. Then I, that, then I played everywhere, you know, everywhere the cricket was happening. So, I was a high, highly demanding player at that time. So, I, I love every minute of that because my back of the mind, you know, like uh, when Pakistan said, thank you very much. So, I said, I still got cricket left. I need to play competitive cricket. Wherever I can go, I can learn. I can pass on my knowledge and I need to enjoy. And that was no pressure on me. You know, like I was enjoying my cricket, having to go in a different country with my family and stuff like that. So I was I was in really good position and, and I was top of my game. And uh, it, it was really, really, in the end, it was really work for me. Talk about Yorkers slower balls how are you practicing it and then any tips you can give young bowlers perhaps again watching this and how they will go about it in their practice sessions as well i got i got some stuff on the youtube you know like other members academy so some stuff is there but i can't I'll tell you but for yorker you know like it's, it's really important ball 
if you practice yoga, you know, you ne- you have to hitting the stumps all the time. So when you go to practice, okay, so think like that, you know, I'm going to develop this yoga today. I'm going to bowl five hours, six hours of yoga, just one ball. Just try to bowl yoga, nail it. And if see how, how you do that, you know, like if, for example, if you're 50-50, the next time you go and beat that you're on milestone, whatever you call, you know, on target. But bowling yoga for me is really important, you know, like where you release the ball. So you need to release the ball. Like when, when I say, you know, like hand up and you watching the base, you know, I played with three different guys. They were all different, you know, like the Steve Akram, Bakar Yunus and Shwe Bakhtar, myself. They were all different, you know. The Steve Akram used to watch on the top of the stumps, you know, bales. Bakar was middle and Shwe was uh, really uh, on the shoe side. I was like that. So we used to practice that. And the best thing I did, I find out, you know, when you practice in Yorker, you feel, you know, you're touching that spot where you want to release the ball. So that means you release the ball late. So this is the best way, you know, and it works for a lot of people. You know, a lot of my bowlers, you know, uh, Shane Jaffrey, really look at that, how beautiful baller he is. And he bowled Yorker with a new ball, old ball, and Hassan Ali, and all these guys, you know, the same method we practice that. And whenever you go in a slow ball, you know, like back of the hand, you need to work it out, you know, how, how you're going to do that. It's, it's just when you're turning your hand, so then you finish the ball like this. So it's, it's just it's just risk coming towards back and then you release the ball. So in that, you know, like when you practice a lot, again, the back of the hand, there's a, you can bowl three different balls. People think, okay, back of the hand, you know, like uh, it's a different release point. You know, like when you release the point, you know, above the eye line, ball will dip. From the normal, you know, ball will land on the length you normally bowl. And then if you want to bowl a bumper, you go further down. So it's three points. One is there. One is there and there. So it, it, it's just like 2 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and almost 10 o'clock. So it's, it's just different release points. And was the move into coaching then inevitable post your playing career? Yeah, it was. I, I never thought I have a... a you know, like uh, I'll be a coach because I think my temperament was not as a coach. But, you know, like, but I, I was doing a player coach at Sare. Then I got a phone call from Vakar Yunus, you know, like he needs calling coach. So I thought, okay, I done my level two way back. I thought, okay, this is good for my CV. Let's go and do that. And that's, that's where it started. When I did that, it was really bad experience, you know, like uh, 2016 World Cup and Asia Cup. Pakistan didn't do well. So I, I, I like it, to be honest. I like it talking to the boys and, you know, different aspects of the game. So I, I like it. And then I said, okay. And I done my level three in, in time. I said, okay, let me do it and see how it end up. And in the end, you know, I got set a contract. I was playing there and then Pakistan called me and I said, okay, uh, what do you think? Because I worked with Mickey a little bit and he liked my work ethics and stuff. They said, why don't you come and join? And then I thought, okay, maybe I can play one more on T20 season. Uh, this is the opportunity to become a coach. Then I start doing that. Then you mentioned the link up with Mickey Arthur. Talk us through that champion, the 2017 champions trophy journey, lifting the trophy at the Oval against arch rivals India as well. Talk us through the journey as a team through that tournament and then on the big day, getting over that line. You know, uh, it's a remarkable journey. You know, like we we try to enhance the fitness level of Pakistan cricketer. You know, we were not the fittest side. We were not the best side uh, in terms of fielding. So when we are good, we were very good. When we were bad, we were very bad. There's no in between. So the whole point was, you know, we can come close. We allow ourselves to go to that level and and achieve that. The only way we can do that, if you have a fit fit side, young side, look at that Babar Azam from that side. All all the guys, Shaheen, Hassan Ali, Shadab, all these guys, you know, Shweb Malik, Shweb. Um, Mohammed Afiz, all these guys were there and uh, they performed really well. We win, 
winning every single thing, you know, like we've been thrashed in the first game against India. Then we had a proper conversation. Guys, look, be honest, you know, like where we went wrong, okay? So let's open here and be honest, okay? There's nothing to lose. What are we going to do? We are number eight side, rank side in the world. So we just need to go and make things happen for ourselves. We need to control things. And then we make some tough decision. And that, you know, we brought back uh, Fakhar Zaman into the side, then young guys. So, and then everything clicked after that, you know. And the best thing was our bowling. You know, our bowling was so good and so precise throughout the tournament. Apart from the first game, no other team made more than 236 runs against us, which is good. Uh, I think Hassan Ali was exceptional. Shadab was brilliant. And uh, all, all, the, all the guys, you know, Amir, the way he bowled in the final was unbelievable. And sa- same goes to the batting, you know, like suddenly batting click, Fakhar Zuman, you know, he got 50, then the captain himself. So it, it, it's just, you know, like it, it wasn't a outclass performance from one player. It was, it was a chip-in performances, you know. So whenever you need that, people will deliver that for you. And then... Can you just take us into the dressing room of a you know a big match game such as that, the Champions Trophy final against India? The boys on the pitch almost seem as if they were playing, you know, have that fearless attitude to kind of express themselves. Is that the key to performing on like executing on a big final stage? Absolutely, you know, like uh, this is the first time Pakistan beat uh, India on ICC events, you know, like we always lose to. Doesn't matter, you know, like we had a side of 90s or whatever. So we we said to the guys, look guys, you know, they beat us in the tournament. So we've been playing good cricket and they are under pressure. We got nothing to lose. We just need to go and express ourselves. You know, if we do our basic law, if we do our thing right, don't worry about the end result. We always look for the end result, you know, or playing against India, you must win because media, attention, people are saying, oh, India game, you have to win. And then, you know, a lot of things coming on the media, social media. And I said to them, you know, like, we we said to them, you know, like, guys, you just need to go and try. Don't worry about the end result. Whatever happened, we are are happy we are in the final. Yes, it's a final. If you make less mistake, we'll be all right. And that's the message from us to the players. And they responded, really, very really well, you know, like, I remember, you know, Amir wasn't playing in the semi-final and they asked me a question, you know, like, oh, Amir is not fit. And he bowled in that day and I said to him, I said, you know, if he's not fit, he's not fit. You know, we had Ramon race. We will decide on the day. Uh, we knew Amir will play and we want him to play, but we said on the day, you know, like, I, I went to the press conference and, you know, like, it's, it's okay. It's, yeah, we have to say it, it's a final. Yes, it's a final. It's a big final against India, Pakistan. I think it's the biggest, biggest final, and so many people are watching this. But you know, we knew that. But we, for the boys, you said it's just another game of cricket. You know, you just need to go and play the way you're playing, and we'll be fine. And to be honest, you know, like uh, that help, that help, and the boys, all of them, they responded really well. And then your coaching career has gone on. Obviously, you've, you've had a little involved with England as well. Obviously, recently, success in the PSL with Multan Sultan. What are your main philosophies as a coach? Trust. I think you don't like trust. I think um, Mickey asked me the same question. He said, what is your philosophy as a trust? You know, trust is very important. You know, coaches, you'd understand the game and the way you communicate one thing, but has a friendship with the players, you know, they can trust you if they're having any sort of issue about their game, about their personal life, they can come to you and speak to you about that. And I think that's really important. Uh, coaching is, is a thankless job, you know, like uh, you can't make every single one happy. But my philosophy is if you got a 15, score of 15, if you make 13 people happy, which is very difficult. So you are fine. Because some somehow or the other, you know, you try to get 15 happy. But if someone is not playing, whether he can't 
deserve it because some are, someone is doing really well, but he can't justify that. This is a human nature, you know. All right. So for my thing is, you know, be open with the place and give them a best possibility, a best opportunity to go and perform on the field. Mm-hmm. And when when they are having a tough time, you back them. You know, that's that's my philosophy. You know, you back them on that day. If if someone got hundred, for example, and you didn't say well played to him, it won't bother him. But if someone having a not or you know not playing well, and you go and talk to them and ask them, you know, that's fine, no problem. We we all done that mistake, and that's that's where you know you get can get people trust and give them a confidence because end of, end of the day it's a game. You know, like you're gonna have successful day or you're gonna have bad days. We all have have it, but how you tell them and how you communicate with them is really important. Azar, perfect. Thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Amazing talking through your career and all the best for the months and years ahead in the in the coaching world. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So Neil Kagram, Cricket Last Stories, Azar Mahmood, thank you. Mm-hmm.